My name is Katie Worthmiller, and I am going to be doing an ethnography on pole vaulting. So first of all, let's start with a cultural overview. I think the main stereotype of pole vaulters is that they're kind of crazy. The most responses I get when I say that I pole vault are, wow, isn't that super scary? Or I could never do that. I'd be too scared. So I think it is definitely viewed as a scary sport and that if you do it, you're pretty crazy to want to do that. And it is not a popular sport in track and field. But if you pole vault, you know that pole vaulters are super self-motivated. They're there because they want to be there. This isn't the kind of sport your coach is going to throw you into on meet day. Because honestly, it is pretty daunting to most people. But pole vaulters are greatly motivated and super nice too. At meets, it is not a very competitive atmosphere because they're there to get a PR. And they're competing against themselves. So it is really a welcoming community. Now here are some pole vault essentials. First of all, you have the pit. You need that for your jump because that's what you land on. And if you don't have that, you could probably break your neck landing on the ground. Um, and then you have your standards. And these are what hold the bar up. And they can be moved back, fo backwards or forwards or up and down. This is called the box. And this is what you plant your pole in um, when you do your jump. And it's connected to the runway. These are called pole vault spikes and they're different from other spikes because they have this strap across the top which gives your foot better support they also have um more cushioning inside to also help with less impact on your foot and your leg and they're also angled up because you should be sprinting and these are uh the design for sprinting spikes uh because you want to be at your maximum speed on your jump these are all the different poles and there are many different kinds, but they all have a weight label at the top, which tells you how much you can weigh to safely jump on it. If you're over your weight label, then you probably shouldn't jump on that pole because you could break it. Uh, if you're under it, that's fine, but you don't want to be over the weight label. And they also vary in length. Obviously, the longer the pole is, the higher you're going to jump. But the shorter it is, it's easier to control. So really finding the best pole for you is important. But don't get attached to your pole because you will progress through poles very fast. This is tape. It's a staple of the pole vaulter uh, practice, and it's used for everything, literally, uh, on your pole for better grip, on your legs for shin splints, taping the tape measure down, you name it. It's used for everything. So that's important to have as well. And then you have your tape measure, which is what you lay al along the runway to know where your steps are at. So now let's go through the steps of a vault. The first step of your jump is the run. And the way you carry the pole is your dominant hand will be at the top and your non-dominant hand will be your bottom hand. Um, your run should be building speed so that you're at your maximum at takeoff. And the way we refer to the run is your steps. So if you're going from a five-step approach, that means if you're a right-hand jumper that your left foot hit the ground five times. After the run, you're going to plant, and this is after the pull drop, so your pull is already in the box, and you are jumping straight up. Your top hand, you should be able to draw a line from your top hand to your takeoff foot, and your driving knee and your bottom arm should be punching up towards the sky. And after the jump, you have your pause, and this is where you want to stop for at least just a second in this nice C position, because that sets you up for a great swing. Um, your trail legs behind you and it builds up power in the pole so that it can recoil with the maximum energy to throw you up. After the pause, you have the swing. This is when you're getting your hips up towards your shoulders and rocking back on the pole. There also should be a break in your left arm so you can eventually invert, which is the next step. This is where you are straight up and down and you should be turning as you go up because at this point the pole is recoiling and throwing you up. So you should be turning so that you can go over the bar on your stomach in this nice pike position, which gives you the maximum space between your stomach and the bar. And you should be pushing off the top of the pole so you can clear the bar safely. And one thing I want to say is that it depends on where your bar the bar is to clear it. So even if you have a perfect jump and your but if your bar is too far back or too far forward, you can hit it on the way up or on the way down. So you need to make sure your bar is at the best place you can clear it. So now that you know how to jump, let's go through a pole vault meet. So first of all, they're gonna you're gonna warm up, and then there's gonna be a starting height, and this is the first elimination for people who can't clear it, you're out. 
Uh, the officials will say you're up, someone's on deck, and someone's in the hole. If you're up, you're going. On deck, you're next. And in the hole, you're after the person on deck. So you need to pay attention so that you're ready for your jump. You need to tell the officials your standards so that they can adjust them correctly. And if you knock the bar off, that's a miss. And if you clear it, that's a clear. Uh, you get three attempts for each jump. But the main bottom line is have fun and enjoy pole vaulting. Thank you for listening to my ethnography.